Remember that you are an entrepreneur. While it sounds exciting and glamorous to consider yourself an entrepreneur, the reality isn't exciting or glamorous. By definition, an entrepreneur is someone who organizes and operates a business, taking on greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. Rather than working for someone else, you're taking the full responsibility of running a business. As a business owner, you're in charge of starting the business, accounting, legal compliance, marketing, sales, managing staff, coming up with startup capital, staying motivated and balancing work and family life, all while trying to minimize risk. If that sounds fun, then you're in the right mindset. But if it doesn't, you really need to reconsider your efforts. If you wanna be your own boss, you better have want to run a business. The fact that most businesses will fail should intimidate you. 95% of businesses will fail within the first five years, according to the Small Business Administration. Why? Because most businesses don't have a sound business plan. Most entrepreneurs haven't accounted for the reality of failure. They simply focus on one end goal and have a difficult time shifting their business strategies in order to accommodate for the market. Most entrepreneurs focus on unrealistic expectations when jumping into any market. Most aspiring photographers overestimate the amount of work that they're gonna see in their careers and are completely blindsided when that's not the case. Which brings me to point number two. Don't overestimate your market. The reality is that most photographers are stubbornly unrealistic. The key to success is finding a balance between optimism and realistic expectations. For example, several years ago, I published an article in Rangefinder called High Fashion, Small Market. The premise of the article was that you could create high-end shoots in small market areas. I discuss how it was absolutely possible to find creative talent like hairstylists and makeup artists regardless of where you are and publish those images in magazines. Do I think that's a concept that someone can create a full-time career out of? Absolutely not. Do I think it's a great way to market your business in a small town? Absolutely. Now, if you're conducting your research, you should be considering your target market. How many people would you be interested in your style of photography? You can't automatically assume that just because you're the only fine art photographer in your city that everyone is going to flock to you. Maybe there's no competition because there's no market for your idea. You need to start conducting market research before opening your doors to clients. You need to be stubbornly dedicated. Everyone says that they want to work doing what they love. That's great. It's a great dream to have. The reality, however, can be the total opposite. The reason that dedicated entrepreneurs succeed is because they're willing to commit to the process of succeeding. They understand the end product is only a byproduct of their efforts, while most people want the results without the effort. Here's the best analogy that I can give you. If you want six pack abs, commit to eating right and go to the gym. If you wanna pass the test, then you'll need to study repetitively. If you wanna become a photographer, you're going to have to commit to growing your business from the ground up. No one is gonna do it for you you need to do it by yourself. And that's plain and simple. There's no shortcut to being a great photographer. You want to get better, you practice. You pick up the camera, you go out, and you shoot. That's the business of photography. It's no different than any other business. If you want to get better at growing your photography business, you learn, you adapt, you grow, you work, you're behind off, and there's no shortcuts. Work hard and get things done. The reason that people can do what they love is because they don't feel like they're working. It's just because they don't realize that time goes by. There's time in my life where I worked behind a desk eight hour days. I would focus on my work, but eight hours felt like an eternity. These days I can work 16, 20 hour days and I'm still anxious for the next day of work. Am I shooting every day? Absolutely not. I'm focused on creating content, marketing, strategizing, and growing my brand. That's all part of the process of being a successful photographer and a successful entrepreneur. Creativity is just a broad term used to describe the use of your imagination. People assume creativity is limited to artistic work, but it's grander than that. Your creativity forms new ideas, methods, and alternatives in any aspect of life, including business. Just because you're an amazing photographer doesn't mean that you're entitled to success. Creativity allows you to become fluid as a photographer. You have the ability to be extremely adaptable 
to all situations because you think outside of the box. For example, I was hired by a magazine to produce images on location. The art director calls me to tell me that most of the photography equipment was accounted for. The background stands you there, the light stands you there, everything's taken care of. The only thing that I needed to bring with me is my core fundamental gear. I'm only required to bring my camera and my lenses. If I learned anything as a photographer, it's to always be prepared just in case. So I grab a single light, a light stand, a canvas background, and my camera bag and I head out that door. Now when I arrive on set, nothing the art director had guaranteed me was actually there. Luckily, I was prepared for such a situation and the only thing that I was missing were background stands. I converted a styling rack into my background and I was able to complete my assignment as necessary. The point of all that is that I found myself in an unfortunate situation. Because I was well prepared and came up with a quick creative solution, I was able to complete my assignment. Business works the same way. Just because you have a business plan doesn't mean that you're guaranteed success and that it'll work. You always have to have a plan B and plan C just in case things don't go the way that you want them to. Think about creativity beyond the image. Companies today use creativity as a problem solving tactic in order to find solutions for complicated problems. Consider this for example, you're a photographer who wants to make a name for yourself as a portrait photographer, but you have to compete in a very saturated market of photographers. Aside from competing on price, what other ways can you competitively market to your target audience? You'll need to think about how to create a competitive advantage. Your competitive advantage is what your photography business is better at than your competitors. You can absolutely compete on quality and service in that example. Maybe everyone in your area delivers images in two to three weeks and you'll deliver images in one. That's an extremely important tactic in today's market considering that we're in an era of instant gratification. The quicker that you can deliver the files, the better. Remember that the importance of creativity isn't limited to creation of your image. Think beyond the mind of an artist and start thinking like a problem solver. Photography, just like any other service-based business, revolves around selling a service to people. Marketing is the act of promoting your business to these people and letting them know that you exist. If you're handing out business cards, making cold calls, attending meetings, sending out sales emails, and simply putting out flyers, you're marketing your photography business. The point of all this is that in order for people to know that they want to invest in your business, they have to know that you exist. Whether you're a wedding photographer, portrait photographer, or fashion photographer, the truth is still the same. People need to know that you're alive. Now, how you choose to make that happen is unique to your own business model. Photographers like Mark Seliger are infamous for starting their careers by being extremely relentless. At the age of 24, Mark moved to New York City and immediately started calling photographers until one of them would allow him to assist. He would later put together a portfolio and start marketing himself to magazines. After hearing no a numerous times, he would eventually drop off his portfolio to Forbes, where a photo editor fell in love with his work. That one relationship yielded a 30-year working career as a photographer. Now, this is only one person that was able to change a person's life. That was the 1980s. While times have changed, the work ethic required is still the same, if not harder. The fashion side of my business has seen many of those same hardships. I don't generally discuss these hardships because the reality is quite less glamorous than the idea. I submitted my first few fashion editorials many times over to more than a hundred publications all around the globe. Oftentimes, I'd see less than five responses back and most of those were no. As tiring as that sounds, it's my reality. I continued my pursuit as a fashion photographer and after meeting the right team of creatives, my work improved and so did my network of art directors and editors. Because I met the right people, I had my work published in L by the time I was 25 and Esquire by the time I was 26. While that may sound impressive, I worked my behind off for it. I want you to leave this series with your head held high and a new grasp for what it really takes to be a photographer in today's market. Now I'm fortunate enough to have friends in every category of photography, from the educational side to the commercial side to small mom and pop shops. My most financially successful friends are always committed to their businesses. There are many more tips that I could have listed here, but ultimately I think that giving you some references to great books is vastly more important 
If you're looking to learn more about business and marketing, I'd recommend the following books. The Personal MBA by Josh Kaufman. The $100 Startup by Chris Galavieu. Start Your Own Business by Entrepreneur Press. And finally, The Lean Startup by Eric Reese. If there's anything else that I can advise you, it's that you need to stay below your budget, deliver content on time, and commit to the promises that you make. All of those tips should guide you in the right direction of making this a fruitful career.